comfortable in your own skin, be the best you that you can be, continue to be that. Uh, we're not out here to become carbon copies of anyone else, but we certainly should not be afraid of influences because um, they'll show you quite a lot about yourself, our interactions and our relationships with other people, other musicians. Uh, tend to reveal quite a bit about ourselves. And so when we uh, bring a certain mindset and attitude to music and to playing music and to playing with other musicians, um, we're going to grow, we're going to expand, we're going to gain knowledge, we're going to, uh, to deepen our uh, grasp of what music can do and the possibilities of music. Um, I think I'll stop talking for a bit and just play a little bit. I know you guys didn't come in here to hear me talk all day. But it is important to, to think about uh, uh, some of these things. And I'll, I'll start talking again after I play. But mindset-wise, you know, this instrument is a support instrument, basically, the drum set. I mean, we're, there's a couple of people who might uh, make... Uh, tours doing solo drum set performances, but by and large, you're going to be playing with a group, with a band, your own band, and uh, someone else's group. And, a, and most often, if you're a sideman, or a, I, I'm not crazy about that term, if you're an accompanist, a hired musician, your uh, particular uh, job is to help make that band leader or that group or that music um, rise to a certain level. You're, you're there to help the composer or arranger or band leader realize his or her musical objective. You're there to, to give uh, as much as you can to that objective. And so playing this instrument in a support role you would think should go hand in hand with keeping your ego in check because you're a supporter. But those of us who play this instrument know that you know you can get you can do a lot on this instrument to bring attention to yourself. And that in and of itself is not a bad thing as long as it's enhancing the music. Uh, but I think if you're not inclined to bring attention to yourself and your focus is is mainly on the music and on making the music uh, be as expansive and creative and beautiful and deep, and whatever other adjectives you can uh, think of. If that's what your objective is and that's what you're doing, you won't have to bring attention to yourself. The attention will come because uh, people will realize that you're making the music sound a certain way, making the music feel a certain way. Your phone's going to ring People are going to want to play with you. People are going to want to hire you and call you to be a part of their musical situation, whatever genre it might be. I, I try not to get stuck in genre and style and all that. Music, music, music. So um, with that in mind, oftentimes at my workshops in recent years, I've talked about um, a certain kind of mindset. I'm a, a big sports fan. I love all kinds of sports, especially basketball, football. Uh, baseball. Did anybody see the Red Sox and Yankees the other last night? Anyway, that's the next subject. Uh, sports often gives a good analogy when I talk about this mindset. I call it the MVP mindset, most valuable player mindset. What do I mean? Who's the most valuable player on the team? Let's, let's pick the Celtics since we're in Boston. We won't pick the Knicks for a few years now, but uh, it could be any team. Who's the most valuable player? Is it the person who scores the most points? Is it the person who's the most athletic? Is it the person who screams the loudest or is the biggest or the fastest? Most often it's not. Most often that player who's the most valuable player, considered to be the most valuable player, is the one who, who makes the team click on all cylinders, who brings the team together, who, when things are falling apart, he or she is the one who kind of gets everyone's attention and, and, and resets the focus of the team. So the same kinds of things can happen in 
in music, and in particular playing this instrument, where we have so much control over what happens dynamically, over what happens in terms of the groove and feel, we really are controlling quite a bit from this chair. So if you are thinking in terms of, okay, the music is first, and uh, when things do happen, as they will, time will get turned around, people will play three A's when they should be going to the bridge, you know, that stuff shouldn't rattle you. Your thought process right at that moment should be, okay, how am I gonna help us bring this back together? Not necessarily how will I bring it back together, but how can I help, how can I uh, draw in, how can I do something to help solidify this, uh, this particular situation right now? So that's what I mean by the MVP mindset. You're thinking of the team, the music first. And it's not necessary for me to have a solo on every tune every night, or even I could play a whole night without a solo because there's so much I can do in enhancing the music uh, during the course of, of a performance that I don't get hung up on those kind of ego, ego-centered things. I like to solo, I would like to, but if I don't, if they don't ask me to, I have enough to do. So I try to bring that, so, so that way it, it decreases any kind of angst, anxiety, stress. If I drop a stick, so a lot of times I'll just laugh at myself. I'm human. <laughs> I'm going for something, I hit this instead of that. I don't know. I just, I just allow for those kinds of things to happen. I keep going for what I'm going for. So that's what I mean by that mindset. Anyway, I'm going to just play a little bit for you. And uh, those of you who are more familiar with the jazz vocabulary and repertoire might recognize what I'm going to do. And if you're not, don't worry about it. It should be musical enough to keep your interest, I hope, even if you don't know what I'm doing. So let's see what comes out here.
Faster than I thought. <laughs> anyway, all in fun, but also in seriousness. You know, when you're when you're playing this instrument, you have to be aware of what else is going on. It doesn't mean you have to be able to scat like Ella, but you have to be able to understand phrasing and and uh, nuance and breathing and all that that the horn players and other soloists are going to be using so that you can understand how to phrase with them, how to set up their phrases, how to come out of their phrases, how to enhance their phrases, how to get under them so you're not covering them up, how to give them enough you know, push when they need it. And you know, for me, having had an opportunity to play with people like Hank Jones, Tommy Flanagan, uh, Corey Tyner, all, all, all the different piano players, Horace, um, that gives me, that's given me a certain thing. And then the horn players that I've had a chance to play with, that's all given me something of Sonny Rollins, um, George Adams, uh, Art Farmer, I mean, I could just, uh, Clifford Jordan, you know, the everyone, even um, someone who I played with at a jam session whose name I can't remember <laughs> has had an effect on me, and I may have learned something from them. So that, uh, just for those of you who might not know, that was called Move, a kind of bebop anthem, Denzel Best. Uh, I hadn't warmed up this morning, so I was laughing at myself when I was losing the stick and kind of not articulating like I wanted, but that's okay. Um, that's all part of it. Sometimes on the road, you don't have a chance, to, you haven't had a chance to warm up. You had to catch three planes, you didn't get a chance to take a shower and go to the hotel. You went straight to the gig, wearing the clothes you were wearing on the plane. You're hungry, you're tired. You have to play. So sometimes that's the way it is. Um, but, and getting back to the musical part of what I'm talking about, 